Recording. There we go. See if you, if you can zoom in. 85 yards. Yeah. Um, We're gonna try. I'm shooting JSP 25 grains, and I'm on offhand. Actually, I think you're in my spot, dude. <laughs> See how you do. Get man. over camera, man. What the? <laughs> All right, here we are. 85 yards. Offhand. Make sure you see me offhand, so people ain't gonna believe this shit. It'll do it. Yo. <laughs> Don't everybody get all excited. <laughs> oh, it looks like, yeah, you know, it looks like kind of weird. All right, where are we at? I gotta find my target. I found it for you, dear. Oh, I don't know. I, there it is. Ready? And I'm not even gonna take my time. Yeah, I'm on line. You hear it? Yep. Oh, but I seen the yeah. pellet go through the light. There he goes. He's dinging the daggone target at 100 yards. That's awesome. That You're fine. We're filming you. You gotta make your shot. <laughs> What are we shooting at? Oh, the hundred yards. AT44. Short. It's not the long. <laughs> hey, Pilot Mountain Air Gunner here. Um, I'm all excited. <laughs> Couldn't wait to get this out. Got a friend of mine. Um, we've been shooting my flash pup for about a year, going over there. Uh, our flash pup and um, AT44. So he finally, after about a year, was able to get one. Um, got got that. Got a stirrup pump. I got some information for you on the gun. Um, and well, <laughs> take a look. First of all. If you're new, if you're brand new, you, you don't own a, own a PCP, let me tell you the story real quick. A buddy of mine, Josh, he, he got a gun. He uh, got, got his first PCP, 25 caliber, the new gauntlet. So he got excited, boom, he went and ordered the gun. He didn't have them test it. We got the gun. Um, we had issues. We couldn't get it filled. Now, after not being able to get it filled, we had done this is after the first day the next day um, we done went to the fire department we've called all over the area in the town or whatever I was actually hunting for a scuba shop before I was sitting there and then finally said hey you know what you know what would be stretchy what kind of gasket could I put in there I need something that would be stretchy either way I'm just gonna shut up go ahead and watch this little video uh, if you're new with PCPs, I suggest 
and I knew this because I think it was Rick Usler was talking about it on uh, Airgun Web TV. So anyway, this was the issue when we first got it. Now this one wasn't tested. Um, so we got it and using a hand pump. We, yeah, I'm recording on this. Um, we couldn't get the... Every time we'd try to put air into it, it would leak. And it would leak out the barrel, out the end of the barrel. So if you had it cocked, it would leak out right here. The thing is, apparently there's a detent ball or something in here, but there's also one on the top of the bottle. And um, you have to have enough pressure to push that ball out and seal it. And they say, you know, a hand pump won't do it. Well, after going to the fire department, calling everybody we could think of, what worked for us, if anybody gets this gun, if you got a hand pump, having somebody else there helps. Get some uh, 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 electrical tape and put it over the end where the ball is, and then put pressure with your hand, have somebody pump it while somebody holds it. Um, and it'll finally take enough, get enough pressure built up that it'll pop the ball out on the end of it so it'll seal. And then when you screw it in, it'll have enough pressure to seal the ball or whatever it needs to seal in here as well. So anybody new, get one, have them seal it for you or fill it up for you if you don't have, if you only got a hand pump. Or do the trick I just told you. That's how we figured it out. <laughs>
gasket on. I got a thicker up. one, and it's uh, it's a little tight on, on the diameter with the uh, shroud tube itself. It just, but it'll keep that barrel from moving around. Okay, so we're gonna try again after putting actually the o-ring we tried on it was too big so we took a thinner one and doubled it and it's keeping the barrel from moving so we're going to find out what was happening was it was off centered and pellets weren't coming out of the barrel they were getting jammed it fired good and now after he getting his first shots one magazine ran through what do we have boom problems 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 and the problem is what I want to go over, my personal opinion of the gun at this but, point. You know, they have the 177 and the 22. They've had it out for a year. They had issues with it. They fixed the barrel band. They fixed the, the slop in, in, in the handle or the uh, cover for the bottle. Okay, woohoo, that's wonderful. Uh, but the functioning of the, of the gun is what's important to me. You know, uh, that there, if it, if that thing would shoot straight as an arrow for me and work, like, uh, I wouldn't care if I had a little slop in it. I'd put duct tape on it if I had to. <laughs> now, I'd probably find a way to fix it and, and tighten it up, but still, but still, yeah, it's the mechanics of the gun itself that's important. So, anyway, first things first, what I don't like, I've watched videos, Hajimoto, uh, his videos, he modded his to get it. I, we didn't run it over to the chronograph because uh, we really didn't have time. We had, I mean, we shot all the way up into the night. We couldn't get it the first night. And then the next day, uh, you know, uh, you know, you're busy. We had worked on stuff for a while. Finally got the bottle filled and got it working and so forth. But either way, it turns out they never fixed. One thing that they done, and this is what bothers me, the barrel diameter in the 25 caliber is the same as the 22 caliber, which means what they've done is had to bore it out a little more, so now it's even thinner. Okay, you put the, uh, a barrel band on the shroud, but the barrel itself is now it's thin, and so you know it needs some kind of support. It needs support in the first place, but now it's even thinner. So anyway. We've got a crack, you know, crack an air stripper straight out of the gate, right out of the box. As soon as we open it up, there's a crack. And and uh, the same with the bottle. Um, you can't screw the you can screw the bottle all the way in, but to get it to line up right, you have to back it out a little bit for for to uh, for the filling nipple there. The um, yeah, and, and your manometer, your gauge on the other side, and also Umarex is. Uh, says in the manual you know the gauge is supposed to be towards you which it's not uh, to get it to work and so people I guess have been modifying their bottles and the manufacturer of the bottles they don't suggest it all of these things I, I can't believe the Numerex put this gun out in, in this way um, me personally I would have sent it back straight out of the box when immediately uh, you know after finding out that there was a problem with uh, the air stripper it had been done you know this is on the second magazine I, I think the second uh, a couple shots but what happened maybe it was where he put the magazine in because it's so thin and any little jolt against it made the barrel move well anyway yeah it's sideways it, um, that this really annoys me that someone you know this guy's waited for a year just like most of us out here but he's waited for over a year uh, to be able to go and buy this thing. And he gets it, you know, I don't care what it is. If you get it, it should work. I mean, come on. And this is the norm. This is what's bothering me is the cracked air strippers. Well, you've got that little teeny thin barrel in there. And that little rubber band uh, uh, that for a gasket that does absolutely nothing. I mean, I'm not... I was an engineer in the Navy, but I'm not an engineer engineer out here. <laughs> I was a mechanical engineer in the Navy. That's a whole different ball game. Um, you know, I can figure out, hey, I need something to hold this barrel from making it wobble. On top of that, you've got the wobble. Um, 
the Haji, Hajimoto done uh, his review, but he made all kinds of mods on his. I think he had changed, uh, he ported it, he had uh, cut the springs, cut, uh, cut the uh, back spring, he put a back piece on it that he's made for the gun. Um, a lot, of, a lot of stuff that he done for the gun to make it shoot for one up to speed the way it is. We didn't get a chronograph it. So even with it being a little slower, you know, with a 25 grain or, or heavier or whatever, if you got plenty of power, probably around 42, 43 foot pound. I don't know. I just what I've seen. That's we haven't tested it yet, so you can't count. That doesn't matter with uh, this personal gun and this video. But either way. Uh, my personal complaints about it is just the fact that out of the box, you know, I was excited for the guy. I couldn't wait. You know, I ordered his pump for him. Uh, we went over there. Nothing. We couldn't get it pumped up. Then we, when we figured out that, uh, you know, how to get air, once we got air into it and we got excited, boom, we got one mag in and started the second mag and boom, it messed up. I felt, well, I felt bad. I, <laughs> I'm the reason he bought it. He asked me, and I went and searched. I said, "Well, I understand there's problems, and I do understand that there are uh, the mechanics, I guess, and fasteners and stuff are better on on the inside of the barrel." Now we didn't check to see if the screws were loose on them um, because I ain't taking it apart, you know. Um, the only reason we had to take the shroud off is we had to get uh, the pellets out of it. So um, either way, my personal opinion, I wouldn't buy it. I mean, it's just that simple just for the simple fact if you buy it and you've got it aired up and it's shooting great right out of the box you've got that little wobbly thin barrel in there and you bump it what's going to hold it you can put a gasket on it uh which is what we done and it'll shoot but nobody who has, who's going to go buy a new car without tires or with three tires on it no you pay for money you pay money for something you want it to work so me personally I would have sent it back. He's happy with it. He, we're going to stick it out, or he, I think, right now is going to uh, stick this out and and see where it goes. Um, try, you know, run it through its paces for about a year and see what happens. But uh, me personally, no, I, I wouldn't buy the gun. I was excited because it was a little lighter. You know, I can hold it up. Our AT44 is is real heavy. Michelle's is, and um, you know, so that that. It's not something, I, maybe with me, I would always have to modify it, have a, uh, a bullpup stock made for it or something like that. But as is, weight-wise, it's balanced really well. I like that. It, you know, a lot of stuff I really like about the gun, especially the internals and the setup, the regulator. That was That's what sold me on it. I got a regulated gun for $300, you know, what could be wrong. And I'd done some research on it, and then I went back and told him and said, man, I don't know about that gun. It doesn't. There's some bad reviews on it, and I said uh, so. And this is not just a few people. This is a lot of people. So either way, we went ahead and got the gun, or he went ahead and got it, figuring well maybe they, you know, he, I guess he was thinking maybe they fixed the problems or whatever. But to me, it's it's pretty piss poor. You know, it's just that simple. And um, you know, come on, Umarex, as far as I know, is a good name. I don't know. I ne neither does he. Um, that's the first gun, Umarex gun we've ever owned, uh, or we, <laughs> or I've ever, ever shot that he's ever owned. So our opinion of it, or at least my opinion of it right off the gate is, man, come on. Are you serious? <laughs> uh, he wasn't real happy, but you know, well, you know, you can help me work on it because I've, I've worked on my gun a little bit. Um, and of course there's videos and stuff like that where you you can work on them but still yeah you should not have to buy anything out of the box and work on it to make it work all I can say uh, for that is um, we're gonna continue to shoot it and find out what happens you know go from here um, and and <laughs> see see where it goes I, I hate to make modifications or any major modifications on it I think that's what I want to do but the, the only thing I can do is, is, is fix that little wobbly barrel uh, a little more I would put uh, I don't know some foam or, or, or uh, somebody had done a video it might have been a Hajimoto actually I think it was where he drilled holes for um, letting air out and put a magic eraser piece in it well you could put a piece of that in there just to steady the barrel as well unless you know you, you 
get a good gasket. Um, ours was a quick fix. Uh, we'll have to go from there. But either way, uh, that's that's my view on the Umarex Gauntlet. What I found out and I, um, my personal opinion, I wouldn't buy it. I would not buy it. I wouldn't buy it until Umarex fixes their problem. You know, recall the gun or send send the parts to the people uh, to fix their guns. I mean, their air strippers are broke. You've got a rubber band in there. Do something. Make a step to make it right and improve because, you know, like the hammer. Uh, it's probably too much for me, but I would still like to shoot it. And you never know. Josh might buy it someday. Maybe I'll get an opportunity. But if this thing is a piece of garbage and it's not going to be fixed, then uh, the hammer has been worked on for quite a while coming out. Uh, all that power uh, and pressure gets caught up in that barrel what's going to happen that could be dangerous you know and that's the whole point with that thin barrel and the wobbly stuff you know even 25 caliber it could be dangerous uh, um, so you know fix your fix your issue um, because that, it really really hurts I know I would never buy another Umarex or buy one from my view just on solely on this gun uh, of course I'm going to do my homework and whatever but anybody else they may not do their homework you know, like a buddy of mine, find me a decent gun, you know, and I know it's going to shoot straight. So that's what I recommended. And now I feel like an idiot. Uh, so either way, my thing is, you know, fix the problems or whatever. Other than that, I'm not really interested <laughs> in, in buying their guns or, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I've always heard good things about them. But this experience is just not bad. I'm sure... Honestly, their guns aren't that aren't bad, or they wouldn't be around and, and have the reputation. So, uh, this particular model, I'd stay away from it. You know, that that's just my opinion. And I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here and not talk you to death. I thank you for watching. Keep on shooting.